in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The consistent efforts of state-owned power utility ESCOM to recognize excellence in the field of energy efficiency through its ETA awards aims at raising awareness of more energy and cost-efficient ways of using electricity. As a result of this, ESCOM Sustainability Executive Dr. Steve Lennon speaks to Zandile Mavuso about the benefits of energy efficiency across industries witnessed through last year's ETA Awards winners. Energy efficiency is, is, is one of those things that whenever we talk about it in ESCOM, we say it's an absolute no-brainer. It, it pushes so many buttons in our business and in society as a whole that all of us should be thinking a lot more about how to be more efficient in the way that we use our energy. So, so think about it. Is that firstly and most importantly for many of us in these times is that it reduces your costs. So with an ESCOM we have an internal energy efficiency program that is aimed at reducing our own use of electricity and coal basically of energy. Why? because it's cheaper to be efficient. And in times of, ra of, 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 of rising energy costs, whether it's electricity or coal or gas um, or petrol, or basically these costs are going up. Energy efficiency reduces your costs. It reduces your environmental footprint. Every kilowatt hour of electricity we produce um, uses around about 1.4 liters of water, for example. We use coal, our stations have got a, a physical footprint, we release emissions, we release around about a kilogram of CO2 for every kilowatt hour. So the lowest emitting kilowatt hour, to quote a former chairman of Eskom, Vali Musa, is the one is th that is never produced or never used. And basically what it also does is that frees up energy for others to use. So it creates opportunities for you to grow in a far, your economy in a far more efficient way. And so that's why ESKIM supports the uh, recognition of energy efficiency initiatives through the ETA Awards. This year, the ESKIM ETA Awards are set to take place on November 28, comprising of eight categories, namely the commercial, industrial, residential, community, young designers, energy efficiency awareness, innovation and energy savings in households, Lennon adds that the media plays a critical role in communicating with the public on ways in which energy efficiency can be incorporated into their lifestyle. A critical element around energy efficiency and why I'm so pleased that you are here with us today is communication. Because so much of energy efficiency is about just making people aware of what they can do and often what they can do at very little cost um, and 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 hence the role of the media the role of communicators in business outside of business uh, in communities um, is recognized in the ETA awards as is leadership in energy efficiency in 2013 four DNA architects were runners-up in the residential category for the work done at the New Jerusalem Children's Home in Midrand. For DNA architects architect Sean Wall states why they integrated energy efficiency into the home's project. I think in, in uh, within South Africa, you know, the last couple of years things have changed with, with climate control and that and these, these new ideas or or requirements have now become uh, part of the new building building regulations when when doing construction in South Africa. So what we try to achieve is is twofold: fulfil those requirements as what the what the council needs, and we wanted to create the building as a, as a almost a learning object for the kids that are involved. Um, what we've been able to achieve is quite a few uh, different different uses here. Uh, we've we've gone majority well m most of the buildings off grid with 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 the use of solar. Uh, all the, the the water facilities, the showers, the bathrooms are all uh, solar energy with power collect uh, solar collectors. The, the the electricity we reduced uh, as far as possible with the use of PV panels, photovoltaic panels. Um, so all our lighting is LED. Uh, the running of computers, etc., works from the from the sun. Further elements on on the actual containers to bring in that whole recycling system was. Um, 
the use of recycled materials, which can be seen in some of the the, the, the timber deck, is a is a reconstituted re timber system. Um, also, the containers are recycled; they they second hand containers. Um, and then you know where we've been lucky enough to get products from various uh, suppliers, like when we've um, gutted out different corporate offices, we reused the, the the carpets from there, and 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 so on. Uh, a further development is that we making use of grey grey water recycling, so all the all the the water is recycled and used for irrigation systems as well, or irrigating of the of the vegetables. Lennon commends the work done by four DNA architects at the New Jerusalem's Children's Home. The New Jerusalem Children's Home is a great example of how different energy forms can work together to meet energy needs far more effectively and save money. Effectively around about 20,000 rand a year reduction on the electricity bill. One of the directors of New Jerusalem Children's Home, Anna Mujapelo, points out that this initiative has become an environment-friendly project which not only focuses on electricity but the environment as a whole. I think the, the container house, you know, it's recycled and that, you know, the children, they're so conscious about recycling and in order to foster that culture, we make sure that they participate in the home, they make sure that they're picking up the litter, they are part of the permaculture garden. We want to sustain ourselves. You can also look at the garden that is here. Mm, the children from the home are actually maintaining it. And we've got also the second permaculture garden that is being maintained by the preschoolers. And they just, they're harvesting. If you see them when they're harvesting, the excitement is just, it's just great. And also we make sure that they attend educational excursions, you know. Um, they, part, they form part of the um, conferences where they will be presenting about saving energy and recycling and about, you know, we, we also harvest rainwater. And they, they are conscious about that, um, that, you know, water should be, should be saved. We should, you know, make use of the rainwater. And also, if you look around, we've got a biobox system all the grey water from the kitchen, from the toilet, from the laundry, we recycle that and around the, the yard we've got, you know, plus minus 200, you know, indigenous trees that, you know, we use that grey water to irrigate, you know, the tree, you know, in the environment. It has make a big difference in the sense that, you know, our bills have gone down and also the, the kind of heaters that we are using, they are eco-friendly and they don't take that much of energy. So there is a big difference. And even sometimes when you've got, you know, um, no electricity, the container house will be our shining, our shining light, you know. And it is our dream that each and every building around, you know, in, in New Jerusalem should be solar powered. That is our goal for 2021. And also, we are focusing also with the water. We are going off the grid completely. We'll be connecting our borehole with all the, the storage system, and we'll be using the borehole water, which will be also ozonated. And in that way, we believe we'll be saving also, you know, quite a lot of, you know, costs in that regard. In the energy savings in household category, Don Burrow walked away as winner. He highlights the reason why he entered the competition. We've reduced our consumption of electricity over the past uh, 17 years by about 75%. Um, and so if we were still using electricity now, like we were using it then, uh, we'd be paying about 20,000 Rand more per year. Uh, and um, we've done that through a variety of changes, some big changes like changing all of our lighting and changing our, the way we heat our water to using the sun and with a whole lot of little changes as well, just being careful about taking shorter showers and turning the lights off when you're not using them and using the stove instead of the oven, the little things like that. Having witnessed how cost-effective using off-grid energy is, Barrow tells us more about how much energy he has saved and reduced since using off-grid and on-grid electricity simultaneously. 
And in addition, our pool pump, we've switched from an ordinary pool pump to a variable speed pool pump, and it uses about, well, one-fifth uh, as much electricity as our pool pump was using before. ESCOM ETA Awards coordinator Anna Marie Murray indicates that in this year's awards, ESCOM hopes to attract people with more innovative ideas on how to save energy. ESCOM also expects more entries than in 2013 across all categories. Well, we always hope for more innovative approaches to things. Your commercial, residential and industrial categories are more um, your formal technology Im Im implementations, but we're looking at uh, people, the big companies getting more savings than, than previously. Innovation, we always hope for something that will blow us out of the water. Um, we're also trying to get um, into funding avenues for these innovators, so it helps if they really come up with amazing stuff. The young kids always blow us away, they are just amazing, the thinking that they've shown over the years. We expect a lot more renewable energy because that has been growing over the past few years where people are now really starting to implement solar and wind energy and those type of energies. We also expect a lot more growth in the renewable energy sector. Um, as we've been seeing over the last few years, people impl implementing solar, wind, uh, even bi biomass um, is coming to the fore. And on awareness, we're hoping to see a lot more companies, media, individuals spreading the word about energy savings because I think as a country we need these people to really get the movement going around energy saving. Other news making headlines this week, the state mills ESCOM's comprehensive sustainability plan. ITEC's former MD Mark McCleary and rugby star Bob Skinstat relaunched technology distributor Seatech and top-level intervention is needed to salvage the Anglo-American and New Lago talks. State-owned electricity producer ESCOM has confirmed that it's handed its comprehensive sustainability plan to Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown, who is a key participant in an interministerial process set up to deal with the utility's financial problems. We have uh, submitted a comprehensive uh, sustainability plan. Now, that plan is uh, the subject of further engagement with uh, relevant uh, departments in government. Those engagements are continuing. I did indicate that uh, we are hopeful uh, that uh, there will be a common solution uh, that is found. But we are not waiting for government to come with solutions. We are already implementing components of that, uh, of that uh, plan, one of which is the business productivity plan. Although CEO Mark McCleary and Chief Marketing Officer Bob Skinstat likened themselves to children in a playground when taking on the task of re-engineering and repositioning the Seatech brand, the young, dynamic and enthusiastic guys were like proud fathers on the day of the relaunch, nine months after being appointed executive directors. There's so much to play. I mean, we've got, we've got obviously the short term, the medium term and, and long term objectives. And I think that on our... On our uh, Sort of on our roadmap immediately is, is the launch of, of a product that, uh, that we've done a lot of research into, the, the plasma ion cluster generators. We think that's going to be revolutionary in, 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 in our environment. And so from a product perspective, that's, that's, that's definitely a focus. Uh, we're also busy repositioning all of our offices to be, you know, to fit in with what we've de designed for a brand, a brand equity position on, on Certic itself. And uh, we're building a data center because we, we firmly believe that uh, the data is the nexus of a solution. South African electricity producer ESCOM claims that discussions are back on track with Anglo-American regarding a coal supply contract with the proposed New Lago colliery in Mpumalanga following an earlier breakdown in the process. Uh, New Lago is, uh, is an embedded mine that uh, uh, is intended to be the main supplier of coal to Kusile. We, we have uh, already contracted uh, uh, coal to meet the initial demand of uh, uh, Kusile uh, from four different uh, mines there. We continue to engage with uh, uh, 
uh, Anglo Inyosi uh, for the long term supply of coal to Kusele. And indeed, we have seen a, 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 a marked improvement in the, in the, the process of finalizing uh, those uh, 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 negotiations. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.